Our story takes place in the shadow of the majestic Superstition Mountain. Pushed up as volcanic fall eons ago, this mountain range has become one of the most famous mountains in the world today. The Indian will tell you that it is a sacred mountain and is the home of the powerful thunder god, and that this thunder god is the protector against all who would infringe upon the sacred grounds that nestle deep within her scraggly peaks. Oh. and welcome to Up Close. I'll be your host for this evening and my name is Andrew West. And tonight we're going to be discussing the Lost Dutchman Mine. The Lost Dutchman Mine was located near Phoenix, Arizona. It's about 40 miles outside near Apache Junction. The Lost Dutchman was known about since about the 1860s. It was discovered supposedly by a man named Dr. Abraham Thorne. Dr. Thorne had cured the local Indians of an eye condition. In reward, they had given him the location of a mine. He was led into the mountains blindfolded and taken to a spot where there was a large pile of gold. And Thorne retired, but did try several times to find the mine unsuccessfully. The next person to have an encounter with it would have been a man named Jacob Waltz. Jacob Waltz was from Germany. The Dutchman was actually German, Deutsch being German. That's how they got the name by mispronouncing it. There are lots of different versions of this story. Uh, this was the most preval uh, prevalent. Uh, I used it, Bob Flowers used it as the, uh, when he was a prospector, Ben Cole used it. Uh, there were lots of guys who were the prospect and old Dutchman in the town used the story. This is the one that was used the most, and this is the one that we used at Apache Land. Jacob Walt supposedly found this mine. He assisted a man named Miguel Peralta. Peralta had been in a knife fight in Mexico. Once again, in reward, he was given a map, and Walt followed it. Unfortunately, his partner, Jacob Weiser, was killed by the Indians. Waltz never went to the mine after this. This would have been in 1881. Waltz died shortly later of pneumonia when the Salt River overflowed its banks and flooded Phoenix. After that, there were quite a few people who went in search of the mine. One of the most famous would be Adolf Ruth. Ruth was a civil servant with a bad leg. He went in the worst time of year, in summer. There are others who will tell you that the gold was that of Don Miguel Peralta. There are records down in Mexico to substantiate this story. It is said that the Peraltas found rich deposits of rose quartz all over the area, extending from what is now Goldfield Town all the way over past Coffee Flat. However, in 1847, the Apache again played a significant part in messing up history for the white man. They attacked the helpless Mexican peon miners, and only Don Miguel would escape with his life back to Mexico. 